episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in, listening, or watching. Doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. Thanks for being here. Yes, that was great. Uh, I felt myself slowing down. I just thought I'd ride the momentum out. That was good. Like I a liked wave it. that you're surfing. Like, you know, you come to Til the, the end, end of time. Yeah. Guys, it's time to let everybody know. What? What's happening? We're done. Oh, that, right. I, I'm happy about that. Yeah. Um, thought, we're tired of doing this. This is the final episode. This is the final episode. This is where the swear words come out. <sighs> okay, anyway. <laughs> what's up, guys? Welcome so to the episode. Close, so Just close. to clarify, no, this is not the final episode. No, that, was a, uh, <laughs> that was a lie. Guys, we've got a jam-packed show uh, today, actually. Yeah, so, it's kind of... Smushed. Yeah, it is a bit Pretty smushed. Well uh, we'll try and slim a couple things down, but very quickly, nah, I do want to mention before we get into <laughs> shove it in their Full face. Uh, we have a giveaway going on right now. Do do do. Uh, we are giving away a Rivals of Ixalan bundle pack. Comes with ten booster packs, Whoa. a dice. Uh, excuse me, a die, not a dice. It's uh, a spin down life counter. It's yeah, not a die yeah. even. Let me be more pedantic. Uh, it's got land packs. It's got all sorts of goodies in it. And we're giving one away completely for free. All you have to do yeah. is subscribe to the YouTube channel and comment on any video you like with hashtag Rivals Giveaway. That's yeah. it. That's all you have to do, and you will be entered to win this for free completely. You can tell us which that. host is cuter, too. We'd, we'd appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, if you'd like that. I mean... It is Kevin's birthday, so tell him. Yeah. Tomorrow, right? Um, Did the day of that? recording this. Oh, the day of recording this, then. Well, the day after recording this? I don't know. It's Monday was my birthday. This is going out Wednesday, so two days ago was my birthday. Right. That. Tell him. Tell it's Kevin. Say it's Kevin. Tell yeah. it's Kevin. Jesus. Tell me it's me because I need this. <laughs> um. Anyway, guys, the schedule for today's episode again a little bit jam packed. We have our random card of the day, of course, kicking our our episode off here. Then we're going to talk very quickly about the challenger decks because we got full deck lists recently and they're actually a lot better than people expected. Then Will is going to be bringing us some limited theory as he likes to do and tends to do a very good job with, so we're excited about that. Oh, my pleasure. Oh, nice. We also, of course, have our question of the week and then our crack of packs at the very end. So, let's kick it off with our random card of the day in three, two, one. Persecute. Two and two black. Choose a color. Target player reveals his or her hand and discards all cards of that color from it. Um, Interesting. That is curious. Uh, I don't like it. I don't okay. either. All right. uh, it's too expensive. Um, yeah. This is a rare, by the way. This has been printed, it looks like, four times. 7th uh, mm -hmm. edition, 8th edition, ninth edition, and Urza's Saga. Right. Uh, and it's a powerful effect, right? Like, technically, Can that's be. could be very good, but it's four mana. And so by that right. point, they're down on cards anyway. So you're lucky to get maybe two cards with this. I was going to say, so the, the decks you would that this is best against are like mono red yeah right? yeah yeah elves per se and you hit it exactly right on turn four they've pitched their hand and they're just beating face so yep. this really doesn't help you that much um i'd say probably in seventh edition that was different but even so i'm not convinced that this ever was that good yeah i really doubt it and i think the price tag says a lot too yeah. it's like a 40 cent rare i will um, say commander Against the Maybe decks that, against the decks that can draw like thirty cards and not care about it, that yes. would be fine. Um, uh, but it is worth noting this is a sorcery, so if they're doing anything right. on their turn only and they're looking to win the game immediately, that's kind of bad for you. Yeah. Um, oh, it's definitely it. It could whiff super hard. Yes. I'm just trying to give it some kind some of some kind of edge. No, I get yeah. you. I get you. Um, yeah, it's not my favorite thing. No. Um, I mean, it's a rare. I don't know why it's a rare. Because in seventh edition. All four mana sorceries like that were I guess. I don't know. That's Scott, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, uh, not a good card. I don't even think in limited this is in any nope. way that good. Nope. Like, nope. I don't think you would necessarily first pick this. N O P E, and we'll talk about why. Oh. Whenever we get to my. Oh, I like that right? segue. Right? Uh, I like to, you know. And then here I come ruining the segue because we're going to talk about the challenger decks first. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> I'm excited to see what these are. Um, so, for anybody that doesn't know, these challenger decks are basically meant uh, to provide Wait, players at FNM a deck that they could buy off the shelf and be able to actually play somewhat competitively at an FNM right out, right out of the box. Uh, these decks are really pretty good, and nobody expected that. A lot of people were thinking, okay, they're bringing the Challenger name back. This is something they've sort of done before. Um, 
but they didn't really expect Wizards to to follow suit and make an actual great deck out of these. Uh, yeah. As we have all been shown, we kind of all got it wrong. Uh, these decks are really not bad. They're not amazing. They're not perfect. But no, for an out-of-the-box product, they are way above average, at least yeah. for the past couple of years. I'm so. going to hold on to my... Um my what's the word i'm looking for my reaction until i see them all yeah i don't want to like spoil anything but that's fair um hold that in for now i do want to say there are four of them they are 60 card decks with a 15 card sideboard and we'll just very quickly go through the names so there's hazard aggro which is of course no surprise the mono red deck um there is vehicle rush which is a mardu deck mm -hmm. uh there is second sun control which is white and blue azorius colors and then there is Counter Surge, which is Golgari, black and green. Huh. And that's very similar to the old school Winding Constrictor deck yeah. that we saw probably about a year, year and a half ago. One Fatal Push in that, though. Just well, and that's the thing. So there are a lot of really fantastic cards in this. So for instance, looking at Hazaret Aggro, we see there's a Chandra Torch of Defiance. There's a Hazaret the Fervent. There's a Glory Bringer. There's three Harsh Mentors. Uh, there's really quite a lot of good cards in this. Even mm -hmm. at Uncommon, there's things like a Braid, which is honestly one of the best Uncommons, I think, out of oh, absolutely. current standard. It's probably the best out of this. It's that very, block very good. Alone. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a lot of very, very good cards in these decks, and they're dimmed down a little bit. You usually get one or two of the really good cards, mm -hmm. and then kind of filler everything else, but honestly, it's not bad. I mean, again, Kari Zev is in here as a three of. Not bad. Beaumont, Beaumont Courier, a four of. Uh, three Soul Scar Mage. You know, it, it's pretty good. There's a few cards that don't really fit very well. Fanatical, Fanatical Firebrand, for instance. On Crop Crasher, not necessarily a, an amazing card. Um, um, well, I don't know about but that. But not bad. That was it's definitely uh, a limited bomb. But On Crop yes. Crasher, it's a tempo play. Yeah. I think it's fine. I like On Crop Crasher. Um, and again, the focus of these is you buy it off the shelf, you pull it out of the box, mm -hmm. and you can play at your FNM and at least have it a reasonably competitive deck. Yeah. And I think they all serve that purpose. I don't want to necessarily go through every single deck list, but we can definitely talk about some of the highlights. Uh, vehicle Rush, obviously focusing around the vehicle aspect. It's got yeah. Sky Sovereign in there, Heart of Kirin. It's okay. It's got four Heart of Kirin. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, oh, very, very powerful, reset. honestly. One Sky Sovereign. Yep. Okay. Four Spire of Industry, which is a great land. The land base isn't awesome. I think this one has, like, the best land base, though. It's got three Aether Hub, a couple of these. I mean, you want to like, see more Dragon Skull. You want to see more. Yeah, land. absolutely. Uh, but You want to see more dual lands, but. For what it is, that's pretty good. Um, I mean, yeah, to get it just off the shelf, sure. Yep. Um, second sign control, we'll just look at now. Not bad. Four it's got to settle down. the wreckage. Uh, it's got three approach, Ops, three fumigate. Sensor, supreme will. It does have a Kefnet, which is a card that you don't actually ever see in constructed play, so that's a little weird. But I think it's it's nice to have kind of a beater as an out. Yeah, absolutely. I guess. Um, but no, I would agree that that's not exactly mm -hmm. the card you want. Um, but it does help you get to your approach. It definitely faster. does. Yeah, yeah. It's draw a card on a stick. Um, I think Field of Ruin also is a good one. Yeah, that's in there. Yeah, yeah. I think this land base is honestly much better, just because you have four dual mm -hmm. lands, all the same color, and the two. Yeah. The, I guess the two mana, uh, two color deck. Excuse me. Would yeah. Be, you know. Yeah. Um, four Wandy Constrictor, four Glint Sleeve Siphoner in the Counter Surge deck. You get only one walking ballista. I think this had the most potential, but is the most dialed down. Uh, yes, but it is still again for an off-the-shelf product. Pretty oh good. no! Like, uh, let it be said, I am nitpicking. I think at this yes, point, I am, but <laughs> which I'm... is fair. Well, only in that don't expect to go and win F and M's with these. No, not at um, all. They're just not as they're tailored, but they're not as focused. Right. Um, they're just kind of they do they do a really good job. Uh, I think the red deck, the mono red deck, is honestly the, just the best. It's only super because, focused because it's mono red. Exactly. Yeah. Only because there's nothing sneaky about red unless you're playing, um, what's the modern card that puts creatures on the field and you sack them? I'm forgetting. Uh, through the Breach. That's it. 
That's it. Took me a second. That's the only, like, <laughs> sneaky red play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I'm with you. But I do want to say that, again, a lot of people are expecting these to just be a terrible product, as no. most of Wizard's stuff kind of has been lately. I wouldn't say terrible. I'd just say, well, except for the gift bundle, maybe. Gift bundle was absolute garbage. Yeah, was uh, but honestly, these seem very, very good for an out-of-the-box product. Uh, I think these are probably worth picking up if you're looking for some of these cards, because, oh, yeah. again, you're going to be able to get your money's worth out of these decks. I think what's really interesting about these is this might be one of the first standard products. They're selling MSRP at $30 a piece. Okay, I'll tell you right now, that red deck is worth more than $30. The red deck has a lot of value in it. I think that these are going to be worth the money to pay for them, so I would definitely say pick a couple of these up, especially if you are missing a few cards, because you're gonna you're gonna make your money's worth. I'm I just think. gonna prove it to you right now. I think Lord Bringer's probably gone down since. Yeah, it um, definitely has. Rekindling Phoenix and stuff is in. Right, right, but it's still probably a five dollar card at least. Load you phone. My phone has been <laughs> aggressively not doing what I want it to. We can do. always just do this. Uh, here, buddy. It's a four. Yeah, it's a four dollar card. I was wrong. Um, well, let's see. We also have Hazaret at. <laughs> What was that, KO? It was my arm. On Hazaret's a $25 card in some places. Really? Yeah, like a $20 card. Easy. Wow. That's a little exciting. Um, um, Chandra is also quite good. And she's... $20 card. Okay, so you've already made your money. I'm going to go buy freaking <laughs> Hazaret aggro just to resell. Yeah, these are honestly really good decks. So uh, no, they they definitely are. pick them. Yeah. Uh, and I, again, I don't want to harp on it too long, but it's just something to keep in mind that um, a lot of people are thinking that this hopefully will be the start of really over, not overpowered, but powerful standard product again. I hope so. There's another, I'm glad you brought this up. Parks and I were looking to get something the other day. Yeah. Um, have you seen the Commander Vault or Commander Arsenal package? No, I have not. $250. Okay. However,. Every card in it is foil, one. Yeah. It's got cards like Ristic Study. Okay. Uh, Kalia. It's, I could go on, honestly, yeah, yeah. just look it up. It has commander staples from all over the place. Is this a new product they're releasing? I believe it is new. Okay. I think it's new. I've not heard of it. Just, so. This just made me think about it. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll actually tell you right now. We'll do it live. This is a very, yeah. like, hodgepodge episode it's today. fine I, ju it, I just kind of remembered that we were looking at this and yeah, he yeah. was getting hype i mean foil ristic study like yeah that's good really Lord. good um it was introduced oh it came out in 2012 2012 pardon me this is okay me. i was gonna say i this did is not new. realize never mind but look at all the stuff that comes in this chaos warp sliver queen that's pretty sweet like karn og karn yeah there's a lot of good stuff in this <laughs> Silver, Silver Library, Library, Scroll Rack, The Mimeoplasm, yeah. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. Yeah, this, <laughs> it's jam-packed. My goodness. goodness. Uh, We're only six years late, but that's Sorry, right. yeah, I thought, it was, I thought it was new. It's not new. Pardon that's still me. really sweet, though. Um, anyway, just to say that they can make good products, and it's yeah. good to see that they're doing that again. I really hope that this is the start of what I think might it has the potential to be a very good year for magic as long as they don't mess it up they're starting off strong let's keep the momentum going <laughs> what do you think the one thing is that could bump them off track if there is a one thing if there's something i think there's two things that could really mess them up okay. that we that is in the foreseeable very near future so I the first off of one but masters 25 mm -hmm. they could very easily screw that up okay uh and the way they would do that is make the same mistake they've always done with the past like two or three master sets mm -hmm. which is have a couple of really good cards mm -hmm. and the rest of it be at the rare level five dollar cards not that exciting and then the commons and uncommon slot have no value mm -hmm. because we saw this in the first Modern Masters, that if the common and uncommon slot has at least a little bit of value, it doesn't have to be a ton, but sure. there were things like Street Wraith at common, Lava Spike at common, there was uh, Lightning Helix at uncommon, mm -hmm. as well as Electrolyze. There were good cards in Definitely. all of the slots. Definitely. And so even if you did get a dollar, two dollar, three dollar rare, 
you still hopefully got at least a common, maybe, or an uncommon that you may not have made all your money back on a $10 pack, but you at least got most of it back. Sure, and that's what you expect with opening packs, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think that's the huge mistake that we've seen over the last few Master sets is that there's just not enough value in the sets. There's a couple great cards. Mm -hmm. Iconic Masters had Mana Drain. Mana Drain is a fantastic card, very, right. very valuable. Uh, definitely the card you want to pull, but outside of that, a lot of the value was just like you had to get a foil mm -hmm. mythic of some sort and yeah. otherwise it was like well it was a bust you know what i mean right so hopefully that that's something that they don't fall into again i think Agreed. the other issue is dominaria because there's a lot of hype around dominaria this is a big set to go back to that's true if they mess it up that is going to turn so many people off of Magic. And I don't know how they could mess this up. There's a lot of different ways, I think, in particular, that they could mess up. It could just be lore stuff. It could be just not printing good cards in it. Some people are speculating that this is going to be the start of the powerful standard again with things like Lightning Bolt and stuff like that. Ooh. I wish, I don't think, I wish that that was going to be a thing. And I hope I'm wrong in saying that I don't think that that is going to happen. I think... For a moment. I think Bolt is the perfect magic card. <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah. to reprint in standard, it would be the perfect magic card. It's, I don't think it's too crazy. It's not. It's not too powerful. It's just good enough. It does yep. one thing and one thing very well. And yep. that's it. Um, my big thing that they could mess up is, and I've said it before, actually, uh, it's banning Jace again. Rebanning Jace. That would be stupid. It would be ridiculous. Yeah. Um, you've spoiled it in the Masters 25 set. You just unbanned it. The price has shot through the roof. Uh, if you ban Jace again, you lose the trust of the Magic community. Hundred percent. There time. will be zero confidence for a in long Wizards. time. Um, so I think that'd be dumb. Uh, it would have to honestly like wreck modern oh, for yeah, me yeah. to even consider. It had to be like a three. Or even four if it's mistakes. like a little bit dominant, sure. But if it's, I mean, if it's taking over, yeah, you need to ban it at right. some point. But give it some time. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I don't think it will. Let me say that again. Yeah, yeah. But. Even so, I think rebanning Jace would be a huge mistake. Yeah, rebanning Blood Elf would be fine, honestly. But doesn't matter that much. No, rebanning because Jace. it's at best an uncommon that's not that expensive anyway. I mean, it's a little yeah. expensive, but it's not terrible. Right. Um, yeah, I'm with you. I think um, banning Jace again would be a huge issue. Mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, but I'm excited for this year. Uh, mm -hmm. These Challenger decks honestly make me even more excited. Pretty good. Yeah, they're Just solid. Good. I'm impressed. Um, all right. Well, moving off the Challenger decks, we kind of harped on them a little longer than we needed to, but... There's so much to talk about. It's it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good product. So, Will, I'm going to hand this over to you, because this is all you... Thanks. Uh, so, I was talking with a buddy uh, at work the other day, and we were talking about drafting, and he's never drafted before. Ooh. Uh, and I wanted to give him some, some pointers, but I wasn't sure how to do it. And then I remembered an article that I read the first... Not the first time I drafted. The first time I drafted in a while. Um, and it was by Marshall Sutcliffe. You hey. know him well. Know him well. I like Marshall. I hope. Yeah, Marshall's a cool guy. Yep. Uh, and he wrote it, so I'm not... I'm sharing it. Right. This ain't my idea. Um, <laughs> but honestly, for new drafters and people who are just in a rut, this is the... Or in a rut who want to win. <laughs> this, is, this is great. Let me say that. If you're looking to like draft something fun, like, I want to draft Defenders... Shambling Ben. Like I did. Uh, this might not work for you. However... Ben Sentinel. Exactly. That's I keep saying Shamley Ben. That's yeah, I don't know. Why. No, I said Fumeral the first time. It's not Shamley Ben. Vent Sentinel. I was Vent was in there. I was halfway there. Okay. Uh, so this is called the Cabs Theory. C A B S, and simply it boils down to cards that affect the board state only. That's it. And there's a set of rules that go along with this, but this is the best thing to remember about them. Uh, we've talked about it before. We will talk about it again. Uh, limited. Being that you don't have all the resources at hand to pull off some crazy janky combo, you want cards that are consistent, you want cards that are simple, and cards that don't, you don't have to stretch to make good in mm -hmm. any way. Uh, you also don't want things like counter spells. We'll talk about that. Okay. I this, agree with that as much as it pains me. <laughs> I want to go over the commandments, and this yeah, first yeah. one might hurt you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And these are in his words, so I'm quoting this article directly. Let me just point that out there. Uh, you will not. Capital not. Splash extra colors. You will play two colors, no more. There's no such thing as a splash. Okay. How do you feel? Uh, I feel like nine times out of the out of ten, 
I try to stick within two colors, so I'm fine with that. There are occasions where if I open, say, a bomb rare or something like that, but I don't end up in that as a main color, mm -hmm. if it fits within the deck and it sort of goes with the, the, the theme of the deck, then I will splash for it. I will say, fitting in the deck to me in limited yeah. means that I can play it on curve as soon as I can without trouble. Right. So on curve is the biggest thing for me, and honestly, it's the biggest thing for limited. It is, yeah. Even yeah. if you get a five drop, that's too white, three colorless, but you're in a black red shell. Mm -hmm. Let's say you get Trap Draw Tyrant, or Trap mm -hmm. Draw Raptor, whatever that card is. Tyrant. But you're playing black red aggro, pirate's aggro, we'll say. Well, it doesn't really fit in that style anyway. Well, okay, it's um, green red dinos. Other... Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Green red dinos. It's a dinosaur, so it's got a little bit of mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of play, but you need two white by turn five. Mm -hmm. Like that's too hard to commit to as a splash. Um, yeah. Even one of cards, like, yeah, can't do it, can't do it. First commandment, okay, I've broken. Ugh. You're exiled from Cab's Island. God. Oh, you're not. You can make it up. Okay. Commandment two. Yeah. You will have a good mana curve. This will prioritize the two and three mana slots for creatures. You will avoid seven drops. That's that wonderful. That makes for me. sense. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I'm with that. for plenty of reasons, at two and three, you're getting cards that aren't always exceptional gonna win you the game but you are getting cards that are consistent easy to play always and if you're in two colors you are on curve pretty much all the time awesome commandment three you will have 15 to 18 creatures in your deck this is perfect yep. you're winning on board all the time you want as many permanents that can a defend and b push the attack always Yep. If you don't have enough creatures, even if you have some really cool combat spells, draw spells, removal spells, if you don't have creatures, sometimes you will feel light on board. Mm -hmm. Avoid it at all costs. You want to have, uh, what was it? What did we say? 15 to 18. I wanted to quote him because I got a little heavy on creatures. Uh, you will avoid <clears throat> card draw spells, build around me enchantments, counter spells, life gain spells, and the like. Why is that, Kev? Because it's just not affecting the board. It's not progressing in any way. Bingo! It does not progress your game plan. I will say, there's one of those I know types. which one it is. What is it? Card draw. Yeah. Uh, depending on what deck you end up in, I'm not saying that you should go for draw spells, but I think there are instances where card draw, if it's just what you have, if that's what you have to go with. I will say this. I hate build around cards, though, personally, in Limited. Would you rather on turn three in limited? Let's say you're in blue green ramp. Yeah. Or aggro, maybe. Blue green aggro, blue green ramp. But, oh, you're blue green something. Would you rather on turn three yeah. put down uh, the. Uh, some, some two, three with an ETB effect? Mm -hmm. Or would you rather cast divination? I agree. I would rather cast, cast the two, three. There are. I'm saying in the situation where you end up with not enough, like creatures or like say you again on three you need something to do i would rather have a card draw spell than any of the other things listed you have a fuzz thanks Sorry. um than any of the other cards listed in that does that make sense like card draw i'm kind of okay of with those, where the rest of them i'm like absolutely in agreement 100 percent. here's what i believe you should draft before a card draw spell okay and you're gonna blanch and that's okay you want a combat trick no i that, you good with that. that? Yeah, I'm fine with okay. that. Okay. I've learned more of that in Limited, because I played a little bit of Rivals Limited. Beautiful. Yeah. But combat tricks over other instants, unless they're yeah. removal. Removal is different, but... Yes. Because, again, what does that do, Kev? It impacts the board. Boom. So, uh, card draw is great, but when you are not looking to get to a certain card, yeah. you're looking to play efficiently and play quickly... Card draw helps by giving you more options, mm -hmm. but it puts you a turn behind if you play it on curve. I see that. Which, in limited, especially if you've drafted a player with these same philosophies, will put you behind. Um, maybe basically. I'm just used to cube draft, where card draw is like, okay. Yeah, cube is, cube is way different. Cube is a whole it's different singleton, thing. singleton, it's kind of, it's draft, but it's kind of sealed -ish too. It's too. Yeah. Cube's a different monster. Okay. <clears throat> Commandment five. Every card in your deck will have a low setup cost. Your cards stand on their own. They don't require gymnastics to be good. So, I don't agree with that. Definitely. Um, low setup cost kind of refers to build around the enchantments mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You don't want to draft omniscience. You don't want to draft um, the flicker artifact that was in 
Innistrad. Door to Cellar Door? Maybe that was it? I think that was it. I don't know. It might have been. No, that wasn't the Flicker thing. That was the zombie thing. Regardless, you don't want to have things to combo into. Right. Because they are going to require other pieces for you to already have played or play later. Mm-hmm. Which means when those come in, you're not trying to A, beat face, B, stop your opponent from beating face, <laughs> <laughs> or C, win the game. Yeah. Really. Um, you're looking to do something cute, which will get you the win. Which, draft, limited is not the place for cute. No. Okay, limited is the place for bloodshed and honesty. <laughs> honesty is in the honest, honest magic. Uh, number six, you will have a simple, clear game plan of beating down your opponent. No milling or combos, just beats. Oh, no, I agree, but that pains a little bit. There is one card. <laughs> there is one card that I am okay with. This kind of goes against all caps, but Mind Crank is <laughs> is good enough in anything. Play it. <laughs> play it. Play it. Play it. Mind Crank is pretty good. Mind Crank is. Too in fact, good. this past weekend, I shared a picture of the Minecraft combo, dude. Because I really want to put that deck together, and I found Tezzeret's Touch. I feel like it might be really good in the Minecraft deck. And here's the reason why. First of all, it creates your artifact yeah. into a five-five, so it's just a beater. Yeah. On top of that, it actually serves to protect the combo because if they kill that creature, the artifact goes to your graveyard and then back to your hand because of Tezzeret's Touch. So they can't just straight up kill it. They have so to exile you're it. You're saying you turn Mind Crank into Mind Crank's creature. Yes. Y'all, that is spicy. I just found that little like interaction the other day, and so I was kind of thinking maybe I should make that a thing. That's <laughs> awesome. Honestly, that that's really, really cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, that that's one exception, <laughs> and that might even Marshall might not like that. Honestly, and that's no, probably not. Probably not. But Mind Crank, I think, is good enough. Mind Crank's just a great card, guys. <laughs> yeah. You milk. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. You will prioritize solid doubles over strikeout slash home run cards. This means you want cards that are consistently good rather than cards that are sometimes very good but sometimes very bad. Uh, super true. Yeah. Cards to avoid like that in draft. Collected Company. You oh, can God. whiff completely off Collected yeah. Company, even though you could stick two permanents on board. You could whiff. Yep. Seems great. Avoid it because it's not consistent enough. I'll say it's consistent and constructed, but maybe not limited. Yeah. Um, solid double cards, cards like uh, Nighthawk. Nighthawk's a perfect example. Great card. Uh, cards like um, uh, Rogue Refiner. Mm-hmm. Uh, comes in, get energy, draw a card. It's a it's a three two or two three. It's a two three. Two three, I believe. Um, cards like that that aren't. No one's. It's not breaking the bank, but mm-hmm. these cards will always do one thing when they come in and then represent just a tiny threat. Uh, a few reasons for this in my mind. You are stretching the value of your deck across your board until you get to your bomb, of course, but you're, one creature is not going to be better necessarily than another creature, or too better, I guess, mm-hmm. um, that you can't win the game off playing a few creatures. Does that make sense? Did I say that right? Yeah, I think you did. So all that to say is until you get to your bomb... If they answer one thing, you're still in an okay position because mm-hmm. you still got enough strength on board to represent your end game plan. It's the spread out, the diversify face. threats. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it. And you mentioned the the keyword here is consistency, right? And in Absolutely. deck building in general, constructed or limited, consistency is obviously something you should always think about. But I think here in a standard limited environment, is the that's the most important time for mm-hmm. consistency because definitely you're not looking to do something cute you're not looking to do some crazy combo none of that stuff should matter in a standard in a standard limited environment what you should be doing is saying like as you mentioned very early on i want to curve out i want to be able to have something maybe not necessarily turn one because a lot of times that's reserved for cheap combat tricks or something like that if you have creatures on turn one by all means go for it yeah, but your two and three slot is definitely where you want to start flooding the board with all these hopefully relatively high impact creatures for that cost. Right. And then just sort of keep curving out and keep curving out. Sometimes you'll be able to get to the point, maybe on turn four, you have two two drops. Great. Play them. Play everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get stuff out there because you're not worried so much about, oh, my opponent's going to try and combo off this turn. Like, right. No, probably not. <laughs> you know? There is no combo. And there may be Usually. a sweeper... They may have it, but generally you don't necessarily have to worry too much about that sort right. of a thing because, again, it's limited. They may not have seen, there may not have been a, a sweeper in the draft at all. If you see one, play around it. If you don't, 
consider it, you know, something that... Uh, I I don't think you need to play around a sweeper necessarily. I think... No. I think limited is about sticking threats and going for it. I mean, I'm just saying. I've seen people get blown out real hard with it, a sweeper when they knew it was there. Well, it can happen, but it most likely won't. That's fair. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Okay. Um, and so most sweepers come out on turn four. Mm-hmm. You can recover on turn four after a sweeper. You can. Limited, usually. Yeah, yeah. Um, you might not win. It's very possible. Yeah. But um, you can recover. Yeah. Most of that, I think. You have enough gas. Um, plus a bomb to get to. Now, now turn eight might be a different story. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, that just comes down to just good magic playing. Yeah, yeah. Clever combat. About knowing um, what the opponent has also. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, all that to say... Uh, limited will make you a better magic player. Mm-hmm. Drafting this way focuses on the fundamentals, the simplicity of a draft, um, not doing anything super complicated. It's good for new <laughs> players to understand. It's good for old players to understand because uh, these uh, values, philosophies, whatever, will just improve your limited game in general. Um, there, there are times when you draft stuff like Frost Breath or mm-hmm. Frost Wall. If you're you know, just kind of want to have fun. Uh, <laughs> there's a blue white flyers image Tempo. in my head pretty much all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that deck again isn't always as consistent as the. I would say almost always it's less consistent as than the, just, just the beat a face deck. beat face deck. Right. Um, and that's something to know too when it comes to drafting. And this is not necessarily in relation to the Cavs theory or anything like that. Is knowing the archetypes because definitely. But that's something that a lot of people, I think, like to skip over. They're like, well, this card's good. And don't necessarily think about what deck it's good in based on the archetypes that are okay. actually in the set. So, for instance, and this is something that's come up kind of recently. Forerunner, I uh, don't remember which one it is, but it's the red one for the dinosaurs in yeah, yeah, yeah. Rivals. Yeah, yeah. Um, Forerunner is like a four drop that searches out a dino. Mm-hmm. Great card. Super, super good. Definitely awesome. And I watched, and I believe it was Marshall Sutcliffe at the time, he was drafting a red-white uh, dino deck. Just aggro dino deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, red-white tends to be the more aggressive version of the dino deck, and he saw the Forerunner, and he was sort of going between this and another card that may not have been quite as good overall, but was probably a little better for his deck because it was a little more aggressive. And so I think a lesser, ex- less experienced drafter might have picked the Forerunner over the more aggressive card that had theoretically a lesser impact compared to the Forerunner. But the reason he said not to pick the Forerunner is because really that's made for the green-red uh, Dino it deck, not deck. the red-white, because it's meant to be on the defensive end. It's just helped to keep you consistent and keep you playing spells, not necessarily to be a super aggressive deck. And okay. so knowing where those cards are actually meant to go and how you can abuse them and whatever archetype you're playing is mm-hmm. super important, I would say. Okay. Um, yeah. Just And that was just something that I saw recently that I wanted to point out when yeah. it came to limited. But. No, that's great. Um, it points out the maximum value of that card. Yeah. Uh, if the deck you're drafting can't abuse it to its full value, but there's another card that may be technically less good but that you can maximize... Mm-hmm. Maybe it's better doing probably that. better going for that. And uh, the latter is probably cheaper in that scenario mm. as well. And a cheaper spell to me is usually more attractive than a more expensive spell. Depending, yeah. there are exceptions, of course, bombs. Yeah, obviously. Well, definitely. Some bomb removal, like torment of venom, I think, back from. Um... Oh my god! No, it was in a uh... hour. Yeah, it was in hours. Mm. Um, but that was sweet. Yeah. Kill a thing and then make him choose discard that was sack pretty or sweet. take three. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Mm, that's nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that's what I wanted to bring to light. Okay, I had le- drafting on the mind all week. And sure, I, I found that article early on. So I think that's helpful. I think um, again, while it's difficult for me to agree on certain points, I do think he he makes very solid points mm-hmm. and definitely things to keep in mind while drafting. Yeah, again, really applying to standard limited, not cube drafting. God no, just want to point God that no. out. <laughs> not even necessarily s- well. Any okay, any kind of sealed limited. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's not. that's what I'm going for. Definitely yeah. not. Um, although in some instances they can. I have drafted beat. Oh beat yeah, and before. they work fine in cube. Yeah. Um, but there's a reason why red, mono red and white weenie decks don't necessarily get drafted very often in cubes. Uh yeah, there is. <laughs> there is. 
I drafted what the last time we cubed a blue white control. I think so. Yeah. Which, incidentally, we're just rambling at this point, so whatever. But control is like my least favorite thing in limited in general, but especially in cube. Oh, okay. Um, I, I mean, obviously, it's not as consistent as the aggressive decks, which is why I don't like it in just a normal limited environment. Sure. But the reason that I think it's so bad in cube is like there are people who can drift, just draft a combo deck like Storm and your cards, if you have like a sweeper or you know spot removal or something like that those cards are now just blank. Sure. On the other end, say you have a lot of counter magic and they just flood the board with creatures occasionally you might counter a couple of them but they're just going to get one eventually and right. so like it's, it's one of those things where some cards, they're very tailored cards. They're good against certain things, and you don't have any clue what you're going to be against it. So right. that's where it's a little bit difficult. I think in regular, like, standard cubing, um, it's a little bit different because you know most of the time you're going to be up against a plethora of creatures, so you can kind of deal with that. But in general, I don't like control. Okay. Unfortunately. I don't either. Because I really like control and constructed. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What? Nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> control is great. I love. I do. I like. I like control more. The more I play with it. Yeah. Um. I just enjoy other decks more. That's fair. Tempo you decks. like doing things on your turn. I very much do. We noticed that recently I when we did the Blood Braid versus yeah. Jace. It, it was physically uncomfortable for me to yeah. try and not play things. <laughs> I had a Snapcaster that I wanted to play. Yeah. And I was like, that's not how you play Snapcaster. Yeah. It's weird, right? He's got Flash for a reason. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, all right. Well, anything else we want to talk about with Limited? With Limited, um, it's fun. You should try it even if yes, you're scared absolutely. to. It'll only make you a better Magic player. And oh, it's yeah. a really good time. Um, yeah. Definitely. That's it. All right. Sweet. Well, moving on then, we come to our question of the week. And the question last week was, what was the first Magic set that you ever opened? And uh, we got Seven. so many responses on this, it was insane. We ended up with 190 comments on the Instagram post. A lot of those were us responding, but say half of that, that's 80. about what we ended up with. So thank you, because that's amazing. That's a lot of responses. Um, Continue. 95. Were you really trying to figure that out? Just now? Was, okay. I long division. Anyway, um, short division. I'm not going to go through every single set because there were tons, but what I wanted to point out with this was that it was really interesting to see the variety of sets. Mm -hmm. We had people all the way back to revised. Shit. Uh, fourth edition, things like that. Thank you. Yeah, did you just <laughs> gloss over that? Um, that's awesome that you have stuck with it this long. Absolutely. Um, I'm sure, as many people have, you may have gone in and out of the game at times. I know I've done yeah. that like twice. But to I be able to say well. the first pack I opened was revised. That's incredible. That's so cool. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, and we had everybody in between too, mm -hmm. on the other end we had people saying things like Kaladesh, Amonkhet, Hour of Devastation, Man. Ixalan. To those of you who are just now getting into the game, welcome. You'll like it here, maybe. I hope. I hope. Don't talk to Jeremy. Don't talk to <laughs> um, <laughs> That was really funny. But it was really, <laughs> it was really nice to see uh, the variety of people yeah. uh, who mm -hmm. are starting into this game and some people who have been playing since the very beginning. So mm -hmm. welcome, all of you, to yeah. our little community in the corner. Yeah, there are a few rules. Don't be a jerk and don't feed the trolls. Um, unless it's me. Cause you're not that much of a troll. I'm not. I'm. I'm, it's, I'm not a um, poop lord, as we'll call it. <laughs> I like to have a good time, and I give my friends grief. Yeah. If I'm at an F and I'm very respectful. Um, professional, almost. Mm. Not like. Not in a weird way, but respectful. We all want to have a good time. Yeah. I'm not like, you know. <laughs> The Brian Kibler. Yeah, yeah. Kibler had the fastest finesse I've ever seen. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. It was... Oh my I hate gosh. that he quit the game. Um, you know why he quit, right? Because of a singular card. Bonfire the Damned. Was it Bonfire the Damned? Yeah. You, you can pull a card and then kill your board. Yeah. 
It's not even in. It, no one plays it. Hitler. <laughs> it's not in standard anymore. He plays Hearthstone now. Why? Right? Hearthstone is so much easier to break than Magic. Yeah. You okay? We're not gonna go. There. We're gonna get Hearth because Hearthstone sucks. It doesn't suck, but it's not balanced. But it's well. less good. It's not balanced well. That's yeah. all I'm saying. I'll um, definitely agree with that. Where I think Magic I don't is. don't like it that much. I think Magic is. Although you can't play Magic everywhere. That's a good point. That's the thing. Is Magic doesn't have a big mobile presence. Doesn't have any mobile presence, really. That's Magic Duels, but... No. Yeah, nobody, nobody plays that. If, if you, you play Magic Duels, Duels, why? That's the question of the week. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. But <laughs> it could be. Now, the question of the week is actually, uh, which Challenger deck do you most want out of ah. the four? Uh, because, honestly, they're all not bad. I kind of lean towards the mono red deck, which is weird for me, because I generally don't like mono red. But I think it just has really good value, to be honest. I think, honestly, the green-black deck might also have pretty good value. I think no yeah, that thing's pretty sweet. The Marty deck, deck doesn't as much. I don't know, four Heart of Kieran's pretty good. I don't think Heart of Kieran's is that, Heart of Kieran is that much anymore. Considering Maybe not, actually, yeah, because the... Vehicles that kind of took its turn. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I will say what feels a little weird is that a lot of these decks feel kind of old school in the standard environment. It's a five dollar card now, but still pretty. Good. Um, like the vehicles deck was really good at a time in standard. <laughs> Bless you. Gosh, shut up. Um, but it's not necessarily at the top of its game right now. And same with like not. mono red. Like it was the deck for a while. It's kind of less so now. Yeah, it's still pretty good. It's it still pretty good. It lost some of its late game presence. Yeah, but definitely. You don't want to give Mono Red too much anyway. That's um, fair. So it's, um, it's fine, I think. Green Black Constrictor was really good mm -hmm. right before, I guess, Vehicles, if I'm remembering correctly. I may be incorrect. No, during. During, during Vehicles. It, okay. It put up with Vehicles okay once it started tacking into more of a control lever. Movie. Yeah, that's fair. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like the decks all seem a little bit old school with the current standard. Not necessarily terribly, but just like a year old, which seems a little weird. You mean that? Hold on, I don't know what you're talking about. Like new, the they all work in standard, but I feel like they would have been better if they had released a year ago. Does that make sense? No. Because we would have had the same standard a year ago. No, Unless you're well, talking about you're taking certain cards and putting them in last year's. Well, we have new standard decks coming out now because of Rivals of Ixalan. Like better standard, not better, but different standard decks, like tribal decks and stuff like that. Merfolk. You think tribal would have worked better a year ago? This is degrading terribly. I'm no, so I'm saying this is what your point is. I'm saying if they're gonna release challenger decks for the oh. current standard, this was like a year behind. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Like if they were gonna release these, okay. it could have maybe been like tribal focused or something okay. like that. Okay. Does that make I'm, sense? I'm there. I thought you were talking about just the current deck circulating in standard right now, not the tribal. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. No. I just mean like these seem a year behind the ball. Okay, I'm with you there. That makes sense. Yes, you I'm, see what I'm yes, saying? Yes, I okay. agree. I actually agree with that. I think. What was that? I don't know why that was really confusing. I, don't know. I think anyway. I missed what you were talking about Challenger. I don't know. Look, we're gonna get our gold cards this time. We are. What's yours? Galta, the Primo Hunger, and mine is Nezahal, the Primo Tide. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is a card that Parks would want. Ooh, Water Knot. Oh, that's pretty good too. Dang, this pack's actually not bad. <laughs> Alright, I didn't get mine. I got, I got mine either. Um, Kumin Kumanas. Wait, Awakening Kumanas. I don't know, man. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws a card. If you have the city's blessing, instead, only you draw a card. This is card draw unlimited, which we've said. You probably shouldn't take. I have... Oh my gosh, you have a very clear pick. <laughs> I do. I also have cards I don't want to see go, but one that's definitely the best. <laughs> yes. Ravenous Chupacabra is my pick. It's not my rare. 100%. C4 Oracle is my rare, which is good. In a specific deck. Yes, that's the thing. Ravenous Chupacabra. I'm now in black, which is one of my comfy colors. Yep. Um, and it's removal on a 2-2. Two -two creature. That's the best uncommon in the set. Yep. I'm just throwing that out there. Yep. Um, I think so. But I also have Thrashing Brontodon, which is, like that card. again, really good. For three, yeah, yeah. you get a 3-4 that you can sack to destroy an artifact or enchantment. Which 
Which may not be the most relevant, but occasionally it gets you there. It's nice. And it's still just good for a three drop. So for a three drop, it's exceptional. Um, I've got kind of interesting cards, all in red and blue, which I think is interesting. Water Knot, which is like pretty good removal for blue, basically. It also mm -hmm. helps you with City's Blessing. Uh, Slippery Scoundrel is fine. It's not my favorite because uh, it, it can have Hexproof and could be unblockable, but I don't think it's necessarily pick. Deadeye Rig Holler is very good. Uh, Reckless Rage is an interesting card. It deals 4 damage to target creature you don't control and 2 damage to a creature you do control. It works with Enrage, but it requires a little setup, which we agreed. No. And Mutiny, which is just a good removal spell, basically, uh, for one red. It lets your opponents, you pick two creatures, they fight each other. Yeah. You don't like that, do you? It's okay. You want Dead Eye Rig Holler, I'm guessing. Do you know why you don't take that first blue one? We'll take it. That's fine. Because you have to have a send. Oh, yeah, yeah. That card good. If not, it's a 2 2 for 3. Yeah, yeah. Which isn't good. For me, it was kind of between Dead Eye Rig Holler and Water Knot. I like Water Knot. I do like Water Knot. Water Knot's okay. It's pretty good. Um, for blue removal, it's fine. Um, but Rig Holler, I think, is much better. Forwards the game plan of you beat face. Well, 100% Water Knot would not come back to me, which means somebody else is going to be in blue, which kind of sucks, but that always happens. Yeah. You know, know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. But no. I know. I'm <laughs> happy with my pick. Um, yeah, blue. yeah, I would be. <laughs> it's the best freaking uncommon. Yep. <laughs> oh, your bomb's really cute. Here's my angry puppy. <laughs> oh, Will. He's ravenous. This is fun. Um, I think unleashed more horrors than just the immortal sun. Los Chupacabras! And you can get your very own Chupacabra if you enter our giveaway for Rivals of yeah, Exile Yeah, in there, guaranteed. Promise you it's in here. No, we have no clue. But, it might uh, be. Yeah, it might be. You've got ten shots at it. Um, True. If you would like to enter, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and comment on any video with hashtag Rivals Giveaway you will automatically be entered to win. Um, with that, though, unless there's anything else you want to touch on. No. All right. We're going to get out of here. My name's Kevin. My name's Will. And this has been It Resolves. This has been It Resolves. This has been It Resolves.